Want to know how to fix your under extruding? Well, it's very simple. All we gotta do is calibrate our extruder or E-step, and today I'm gonna show you how. Hey everybody, my name is Vijay and welcome to SandTube 3D, your best resource for all things 3D printing related. On this channel, we do how-to videos, tutorials, troubleshooting, product reviews, and many more. So if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, the little icon on the bottom right of your screen. With that said, let's jump into our video for today. So before we can calibrate, we need to understand what is under-extruding or over-extruding and how does this calibration help you, okay? So imagine this little strand of filament here is from tip to tip 100 millimeters, okay? So basically when you tell your printer to extrude 100 millimeters, it should extrude from here to here all the way through no problem if that happens you're in great shape because your printer is doing exactly what you're telling it to do but most of the time over a per period of time or even right out the box from the manufacturer it's not cali it's not calibrated correctly so what that means is if you tell your printer to extrude 100 millimeters so at this point it starts and it goes through and let's say it stops right here so this is only 90 millimeters but you told it to do 100 therefore you're under extruding by 10 millimeters now sometimes it could be vice versa where you tell it to print or extrude 100 millimeters but it might actually print 110 in that case you're actually over extruding so the point of this calibration here guys is to make sure when we tell the printer to extrude 100 millimeters it actually extrudes 100 millimeters and this is one of the main reasons why you get the gaps in your print and under on all your prints all right guys so just if you're wondering this is what it looks like when you get under extruding see the wings right here you can physically see the line and the gaps and right here on the chest piece as well another one would be this right here you can actually see going through and this part is really bad and the last one would be this castle right here you can physically see the lines right there and to prove my point I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the lights and take a flashlight on this and you can actually see right there and right there you should not be able to see those lines so there you go so with that said Let's go ahead and get right into how to calibrate our extruder or E-step. All right guys, a few things you're gonna need to calibrate your extruder or E-step is basically some kind of a measuring device, whether it be an old school ruler or something digital. You're also gonna need about three feet, just to be safe, about three feet of filament or one yard, um, I guess, if you convert it. And some kind of a marker or Sharpie where it's gonna visibly show when you make marks on here because we're gonna have to measure the filament to make sure that it's extruding correctly alright guys just a quick side note uh, if you don't know what temperature your filament prints best at find that out I would highly recommend it so for example this filament right here prints best at 205 for the test I'm gonna increase it by 5 degrees so whatever your comfortable temperature is for that particular filament I would recommend that you increase it by 5 just for this test so it uh, spills out smoothly through the nozzle. The 3D printer we're gonna use today to calibrate the E-Step will be the Creality CR-10S. So the very first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and heat up the nozzle to the desired temperature that you want. So for example, 205 was the best for this filament that I normally print with, but I'm gonna go ahead and heat it up to 210. So before I turn up the temperature, guys, uh, one thing I do like to do is, from the main menu so I can show you, Okay, I go to prepare, move access, then I go to one millimeter and I'm gonna increase the height of my Z axis. The only reason we're gonna do that is because when I'm actually doing the test and extruding, I don't want the filament to extrude right onto the glass. So this is something, if you do it now, you won't have to do it later on down the line. So just increase this to whatever height you want. All right, so now that we got our Z-axis raised, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn up the temperature. Again, this is based on the type of filament you use, but I'm gonna go ahead and set it to 210, 
And once we get to the designated or the desired temperature, then we'll continue from there. So we got our temperature up to 210. We've loaded the filament that I was talking about earlier. And for this test or this calibration, I'm actually going to use this ruler right here. So what you want to do is you want to find a fixed point first. So most of the time, it'll be right where your filament goes in. So this part right here, that side, is going to be your fixed point. So you're going to take your ruler, you're going to put it like so, stretch out the filament, make sure it's straight. And once you've got it, just go ahead and mark where the 100 millimeters would be. So that's my 100 millimeters right there. Now, one thing I would suggest that you guys also do, if you under screwed, you're going to have filament left over and you'll know exactly where your mark was. But if you over extrude, you're not going to know exactly how much you over extruded by. So from that 100, go ahead and put that in there and just mark off 10 millimeters and then mark off another 10 millimeters. So you have a total of 120 millimeters, 110 and 100 right there. So if it over extrudes, we know exactly by how much. All right, so once everything is good, your temperature's there, your filament's loaded, you got everything marked, you're gonna go into your control box, you're gonna go down to prepare, you're gonna go to move access, and I would recommend that you pick the point one if you're using a Creality, and down here you'll see extruder, okay? Once you click on that, this will be zero. So whatever you tell it to extrude, it will do that. Now just a side note guys, if you turn the knob too fast here, for some reason the Creality's, they tend to reset the software and then you'll see like a Creality logo and nothing will happen. So it'll just keep loading over and over and over like if you shut it off and shut it back on. So what you wanna do is do it really slowly and what we're gonna do is extrude 100 millimeters. As you can see as I'm extruding, or turning up the extruder numbers, the higher it gets, the more filament is coming out. So I'm gonna keep doing this until I get to about 100. So there you go, now I'm at 100. I'm just gonna let it finish extruding as you can see right there. And then we're gonna check if it over extruded or under extruded, or if we're good to go. All right, so I'm gonna measure how much I actually over extruded. And again, you're gonna go from the fixed point which is right there and I'm going to go to 120 which is right there so it looks like 13.1 alright guys so this is the formula that you're gonna to use to calibrate the new e-step value you're gonna do to put it in layman's terms what millimeter you told the 3d printer to extrude times the e-step value which is in your firmware now on this part guys on printers such as the CR10 you can actually go into the menu and find the e-step value which is located inside the firmware uh, for the CR10S and the Ender 3 it will not give you this in the firmware so you would have to find out from either your Facebook group or from somewhere online what the default e-step value is that's set in the firmware and that's very easy to find out you can actually just google that or just ask somebody on your facebook forum for those of you that can get your e-step value from your control box this is how you access it go and press that button go to control motion and scroll down until you get to something called e-step which is right there so you so multiply these two together and then divide it by what the printer actually extruded so for example what we did today Okay, I told my printer to extrude 100 millimeters, right? So I'm going to multiply that by the CR10S, guys, for those of you that have it, the default is actually 95. So this is something I did find out. Um, for my CR10, it was actually 96, so whatever it was. You multiply these two together and then divide it by what it actually extruded. Now, I told it to extrude 100, but it did more than that. So out of 120, which I measured, I had 13.7 left. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract that. So 120 minus 13.7 
is 106. So my printer actually excluded 106.3. So that's what I'm going to put down here. And, and how I got the 106, guys, again, notice this was the filament that I had. So let's say from here, from this point to this point was 100. And then I added a 10 and a 10. So this dot right here was actually in the filament feeder and this part was left. So from that same fixed point, I measured 120 to what was left. And what was left was 13.7. That's what was left on the filament from the fixed point to the 120. So I subtracted 120 with 13.7 and that gave me 106. So this is how much the printer actually extruded. So now you just take that and divide it. So you got 100 times 95, which is 950. Okay, so you got 9. And you divide that by 106. So 9500 0, 0, divided by 106.3. And this should be actually my new value right there because my printer actually over extruded. So if I divide it like so, my new value should be 89.37. And at that new E-step value, I should be extruding at 100%. Now let's say, guys, for you guys, you actually under-extruded. So let's just say what millimeter you told the printer to print, which was 100 millimeters, right, times... Let's say your value is still at 95. We're doing the CR10S here. And you divide that by what actually extruded. Now, in my case, it was 106.3. But let's say in your case, it only extruded, um, let's say, 95. Okay? So you're going to take 9500 0, 0, divided by 95. Let's get a little calculator. should be 100, but just to double check. Divided by 95. So now you need to set your new value to 100 millimeters. And I'm going to show you that how to do that. If you have the CR10, guys, the way I showed you to find the E-step value, you can just go in there, click on it, and then just change the number. But for like the CR10S and the Ender and other printers that don't have the E-step value uh, accessible on the control box, you can actually adjust this in Kira and I'm going to show you how to do that. Alright guys, for those of you that can actually change it in the firmware itself, again you would just go to control, go down to motion, and you're going to go all the way down to where you see E-step, click on that, and here you can actually change the value of what it should be. Alright guys, so the first way basically uh, is when you have access to your control box where you can manually change the E-step which I just showed you how to do. Now for all other printers where you can't go into the main control box or the firmware and change the actual value that you just got, uh, this is how you can do it. Sorry I don't have a simplified 3D guys so I can't show you how to do it in that but I'm gonna show you in Kira. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to Kira, Preferences, Printers and here you're gonna pick what printer you're using. We're using the CR10 so uh, the CR10 is highlighted. I'm going to click on machine settings and what you're trying to look for is the start g-code right here. Um, this is the default g-code that you're going to get with Kira when you select um, the CR10 or your printer. So what we're looking to do is add a line to it. So we're going to hit enter right under the G92 space E0 and you're going to add this line right here. So basically M92 is what we're going to enter space E89.37, which is the number that I got earlier in the video. So, all you're going to do is just add that. So, basically, what this means is this is the line, and um, you're going to type in the M92 here and E for extruder and the new value that you got. And once you do that, you're all set. If you go back, it's going to be there from now on. So, now you're telling the printer that this is your correct new e step value giving you better print qualities and hopefully eliminating the 
underscrewing problem that you guys have been having. But that's it guys, that's how you enter it for all the other computers right here, the second way of doing it. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave it down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hey, you know what? Give it a down. It is what it is. If you're new to the channel, go and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, guys, which would be very appreciated, uh, I'll put some links down below as well. And with that all said, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.